Astro hits 1.0, some NPM security updates, open source emoji, and the most arranged robot you'll ever see. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and the coolest open source projects. So please like and subscribe to our channel. My shirt this week, it's something, I think I got it off of woot.com. I don't even know. If you can see it, it's a name tag that's essentially just a funny sequel joke. Cool. All right, moving on. It's the dog days of summer. Well, Northern Hemisphere summer. And you guys, the news is slow. Whoa, whoa. So we took last week off and I'll also be off next week because I'm going back to Atlanta to visit my family and to celebrate my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom, you rule. All right, let's get into the news. Okay, so the first thing I wanna mention is that Git and Merge 2022 is about a month away. It'll be taking place on September 14th and 15th in Chicago. Details are linked down below, but if you want the best conference about the Git ecosystem, well, this is it. I'm gonna be there alongside a ton of my colleagues, so if you see me there, please say hello. Next, let's talk about NPM and security. Okay, so for much of the last eight or nine months, the topic of security and supply chain attacks has permeated a lot of different open source communities, including NPM. And NPM has made some really great strides to improve security in its ecosystem by requiring things like MFA for user accounts. But now the NPM team has opened up an RFC, that's a request for comment, to discuss linking a package with its source repository and its build environment. And as the blog post, which I've got linked down below says, when package maintainers opt into the system, consumers of their packages can have more confidence that the contents of the package match the contents of the linked repository. The blog post goes into some detail about the history about why linking packages back to source code has been difficult in the past, but thanks to a project from the Linux Foundation and the OpenSSF called SIGSTOR, that process is actually easier and more secure than previous methods because developers aren't required to manage their own cryptographic keys. Anyway, I think that this could be a really good solution for NPM and, and even other communities too. But as I said, this is an RFC, so if you have comments or opinions, you can leave them in the issue, which I've got linked down below alongside the blog post. Next, in some OSS project news, huge congrats to the Astro team on hitting 1.0 this week. Astro, if you're not familiar, is a web framework that's designed for making fast, content-focused websites. And over the last 16 months, Astro has amassed over 13,000 stars on GitHub and 30,000 users. And I like it a lot because you can build a really fast website with a JavaScript framework, but that framework doesn't then have to be loaded on the front end. So developers get a really nice experience when they're building a website, but then the performance is really top-notch for end users. Cool stuff. Anyway, more details are linked down below. Check out the Astro GitHub repos for more information. And uh, just a tip, you can actually uh, deploy a static Astro site to GitHub pages if you want, um, though it works with lots of other static uh, site hosts too. Moving on, I wanna give a shout out and a heads up about JS 13K Games 2022. And the next edition of the long running JavaScript coding competition starts on August 13th and it runs through September 13th. The theme for this year will be announced on the 13th, so be sure to check it out. And JS 13K Games is an annual JavaScript coding competition for HTML5 games. And uh, it's actually been, been running since 2012, but what makes JS 13K Games fun is that the file size limit for the competition is 13 kilobytes. Now remember, 640K should be enough for anyone, but 13K, that's just nuts. Anyway, the fun part of the competition is the file size limit. You can check out the website, link down below for the competition, as well as some tips and tricks, resources, and a look back at the last decade of competition. I really, really love this. Next up, VS Code 1.7 was released recently, and this update adds some title bar customization options and terminal improvements, including turning shell integration on by default. Uh, there's also some cool stuff happening with the way that the Markdown language server works. Details are linked down below, and remember that you can make contributions or file bugs within uh, the, the VS Code repo, which is over on GitHub. All right, while we're talking about Microsoft, let's go ahead and talk about how the design team has decided to make a very cool decision to open source most of its recently updated emoji library, and they've put that on GitHub and on Figma. Now, the bad news first. Clippy is not part of the release because apparently the Microsoft lawyers knew that there, this would lead people 
me uh, to do really ridiculous things to computing's best icon. That said, there are still over 1,500 emoji that are really fun, and they're fully open sourced for you to use, remix, and do what you want with them. And I've got the links uh, down, in the details are linked down below. I cannot wait for the internet to do what the internet does, which is to create horrific, horrific things with the eggplant. All right, it's a slow news week, so let's open up a good old fashioned debate. This one comes courtesy of Lloyd Atkinson, who asks, should you squash, merge, or merge, commit? His post, which I've got linked down below, outlines a lot of the basic arguments for both sides of, of the merge debate, but he hedges as to what option is best. Reddit had no such qualms in arguing about this. That's where I saw Lloyd's post. Uh, I saw several hundred comments. And look, I love a good flame war, so let me know your preferred merge method in the comments down below. Bonus points for the people who just wanna comment rebase and then leave, you are my people. All right, and now it's time for my pick of the week. Robot creator Adam Beetle has made what might just be the most psychotic invention I've ever seen. Sci-fi author John Scalzi actually remarked that it might violate the Geneva Convention, and he's right, it might. So basically, Adam created a robot that launches Legos at your feet, forcing you to step on them. Or as my old colleague, uh, Andrew Lazuski put it, sadistic monster creates a smart cannon that makes you step on Legos. Love this. So please watch Adam's video, which is linked down below, and see the hilarity and the mayhem that he created using a webcam, some 3D printed parts, and the OpenCV computer vision library. Thanks, I hate it. By which of course I mean that I, I love it. All right, let me know what sort of sadistic toy robot you would like to see Adam build next in the comments down below, or let me know your thoughts on any of the other stories we covered this week. And remember to sound off on the uh, squash merge versus merge commit war down below too. All right, that does it for me. If you liked this episode, leave me a like and subscribe to the uh, GitHub YouTube channel uh, for all your nerd needs. See you next time.